personalities and of course learn from outstanding personalities all of this for one purpose and that is to improve the welfare of young people in Zambia. Welcome to the country's number one youth show and this the show that we love to call The Link. Broadcasting live from the Masjidi Complex right here in Lusaka. The good thing about this show is that you can participate and the number to call is 0211 like our Facebook page. The link to be to and definitely Lennon will be readily available to read all your messages live on Facebook right here in the studio. I'm joined by uh, Sebastian Scott, who is actually a farmer and a young person who is no other than Paul Daka. is actually an entrepreneur. We're discussing young people and agriculture, should I say youths and agriculture, the topic of discussion for today. Actually, you can watch this live broadcast of the link on a Go TV, which is channel 91 or DSTV 276. And Top Star is actually 03, and there and then will be able to catch everything direct from here the must be the complex mr scott welcome to the show thank you uh, thank you for inviting me hello viewers mm. Mm. how how is how is the fuel the fuel is fine a little bit dry okay i haven't had rain for 12 days but uh, otherwise looking like it's gonna be a good crop you know as farmers when you say how is the fuel, we think about our crop in the field rather than anything else anything you know? else just uh, crops yeah uh, crops and our animals those are <laughs> like our children okay all right yeah. thank you very much uh we also have paul uh Daka. paul welcome to the show it's, it's good to have a young person we always want to have young people so that they give their perspective with regards to our thing for this thank you for according us the time your precious time to come to this it's always a pleasure to be here all right, and in the studio, we're also joined by a uh, live, you know, uh, audience uh, from Kafu Institute uh, Teacher of Education. A big round of applause, guys. Thank you very much. All right, quick start the interview. I, I, I'll start with um, Mr. Uh, Scott here. Why is farming very important? Somebody, would, uh, the first thing that came to my mind when I saw you, um, I thought you are somebody that is into maybe mechanics, uh, maybe engineering and whatnot, but when I heard you say you are farmers, like, okay, this is different. But the question is, why is farming significant? Or why is farming important? Mm. I'm very passionate about farming, so when you ask me that question, I'm gonna ask you a question. How long do we have? Because I can talk about farming all day. So give me a time <laughs> You have 30 seconds, you have 30 seconds. <laughs> so, you know, Farming started about 10,000 years ago here in Africa, in Egypt. Mm -hmm. A little bit later in China and then later on in South America. And it started when people learned that instead of going to harvest food, you could actually plant the seeds and reap the grain. Mm. That allowed people to produce a lot of food. One person could now produce enough food for 10 people. That meant that the nine people who were left could then go and do other things and specialize in other things like building, carpentry, uh, you know, developing civilization as we know it today without agriculture couldn't have happened because we'd all be looking around for food. Mm -hmm. So the act of agriculture for me is probably the most important thing we talk about some, as the backbone for our economy and our civilization as we know it today. You know, you, 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 I don't want to sound big-headed, but we have doctors, lawyers, bankers, all these people seem to be very high up in society, but uh, each one of them I know for certain mm -hmm. at breakfast, or if they missed breakfast, they had lunch, or if they happened to miss breakfast and lunch, they had dinner. Okay. And that is thanks to farmers like myself, who really, for any society, farming really is the backbone of any economy and society and civilization in general. Okay. Paul, same question. Why is farming important? Give us a useful perspective. Well, for me, um, I actually draw my significance uh, in agriculture from my upbringing. You know, I grew up in the Copper Belt. And uh, I don't know about now, but because I left the Copper Belt about, roughly about 10, 11 years ago. Okay. But the time we were growing up, uh, most of our neighborhood was, was bush, it was plain bush. So, you know, there were times when um, you don't have much at home. And then the, 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 the immediate thing that you survive by is the, the, the small portions of land that you pick from the bushes and put a few plants in there. And then at home, you have the small chicken run. So from that kind of an experience, 
we knew that even if we don't have much at home, as long as we have a field to go to, as long as we have a chicken run to go to where we have a few animals, it kind of uh, spoke to me and told me to say agriculture is actually uh, a way to go because you don't necessarily, necessarily have to have a lot of um, money, so to say, but then you can survive just by being able to have uh, a field where you can time and again pick uh, some crops that you can survive by. Okay, uh, uh, Mrs. Scott, how can agriculture improve our life? Because I, I've seen a lot of young people, the first thing that comes to their mind or to our minds, let me include myself, uh, when I hear the word agriculture or farming, is that uh, has to do everything with somebody who's got no qualification whatsoever and they literally have no choice but to go into farming. Uh, it's, it's, it's for old people, it's, it's for peasants and whatnot. But how can agriculture improve our livelihood and the country's economy? Thank you, sir. That's a very important question. I think in Zambia we have a, an interesting situation. You've got some people, like you said, who are forced into farming, they don't have a choice. Mm. Then you've got people in, in town who are deciding to leave town and go back to the land. You know, it's not just in Zambia. In fact, if you, if you look around the world, like for example in the UK, the average age of a farmer is over 70. If you look in the USA, it's over 60, it's around 65. Here, I'm not sure what it is, but there's like a trend. And I think most in those countries, and the same situation here, people think you need a lot of money and capital to go into farming. The, the kind of farming that's going to give you business. So people see it as a barrier to have like a tractor and all those fancy things people see as, you know, profitable farming rather than subsistence farming. They say, no, I don't have access to that funding, so let me just stay in town and, and do a job here. And, the, you know, the other dynamic which is happening is, you know, people in the rural areas, over time their soils have been depleting slowly. So the yields are going down. So the young people who have grown up in this environment, they're looking and saying, no, if, my, if, if the yields are going down and we're having less and less money, am I going to stay here? I'm not. So let me go and try and find work in town. This is a very unfortunate situation which is happening. Luckily, we have a lot of new information and technology that, uh, you know, someone like myself is very passionate about farming and educating farmers, you know, I work around the country with farmers teaching and basically improve methods of, of agriculture, and not just myself, lo lots of people doing it. Uh, and really we have uh, this vision to say, if, if people are going to stay in the rural areas, we've got to make farming a business, mm -hmm. and make it such that it's attractive enough to compete with the, you know, coming to town to, to have a job. Otherwise, who's going to do the farming? Are we going to manage to survive with no food going forward? Mm -hmm. I don't think we are. And on top of that, I think you asked about the potential in the economy. Uh, I had a chance to go to Brazil to visit farmers uh, a few years back. In Brazil, farming contributes about 30% to the Brazilian GDP, which for a country of 200 million people, the fifth largest economy in the world, is massive. Yeah. And the way they've been able to do that, uh, 20, 30 years ago, it was only 5%. So they've injected a lot of money into education, research, and that's taken the whole country forward. 30% of their GDP is now agriculture. So they're really showing us the way how to do ag make agriculture a real driver for the economy. And uh, why can't we do it here in Zambia? I think the potential here is maybe even better than it is in Brazil. Okay. Everything's there. All right. Before I go to the audience, uh, let, let, let's get uh, some sentiments from Paul. Uh, Paul, uh, young people perceive agriculture like a saint for old people. The saint, who, who, when we go to fields, who are we living in Hill for? Who are we living in Ispak for? Shawam and the rest of They can still do all that. But then they feel, okay, this thing, I think for me, as a young person, I can't do it. Let me first be 60 or 70, like Mr. Scott was saying. But how can it improve? You know our economy as well as our livelihood. No, um, I'm not. I'm not. Uh, I have. I have prospects of becoming a farmer, but at the moment I'm an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. So let me uh, answer this question in the from a perspective of an entrepreneur. You know the major problem that I have come to understand now. It's, it's a pity I've only come to understand this when it's a 
bit too late. I wish I knew this like way back. Mm. So the major problem that I've come to understand is that um, our education system doesn't exactly wire us or doesn't exactly promote us to be people who get involved hands-on in the productivity of the, of the, of the, of the, of the country. Mm. Why I say so is because, um, you know, way back, uh, I, I'll, I'll give a perfect example of it that was close enough because I don't know about Alice. But growing up, uh, there was a trend where if our parents are in, uh, involved in, are employed uh, mostly by the government, or uh, if I'm speaking from my background on the copper belt, if our parents are employed by the mines, they will work the entire lives, get their paycheck, uh, pay bills, and take care of a few problems at home, and then the rest of the problem after the, the, the paycheck has, 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 has uh, they've exhausted the paycheck, they'll have to accumulate the problems and let them uh, drip down into the following month. And then uh, they'll have to wait until they get their, their benefits after they're done with work to get, if it's a vehicle that they want to get, it's, it was a common trend for them to buy a car. They'll have to wait until they get their pension. Uh, they'll, if, if they have to buy a house or a farm, they have to wait until they get their pension. So the one thing that I realized is uh, we are living in a time where we have, like you say, we are exposed to a lot of information. We are moving at a rate where everything is possible because we have information at, at hand, like it's just everywhere. So when I talk about agriculture and, and, and entrepreneurship uh, altogether, is that we have been uh, subjected to an education system that says you have to go to school, develop the skill, mm -hmm. and then work for somebody. So you mentioned the aspect of, of, of education, you said, yeah. Uh, our, our, our education system does not wire us to do the actual thing, the practical thing, but only have the theory. Are you blaming the education education system for lack of uh, youth performance or interest in agriculture? Uh, not not entirely, but to some extent I am. Okay. Because if you look at uh, one of the world's biggest economies right now, China, mm. you find that when you go to their factories, I haven't been, but I've, I've read enough and I've seen enough. If you go to the factories, the age group that you find being practical, uh, making the, 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 the things that you actually get to buy from here, are young people. And you want, you want uh, obviously, I don't know about how the education system is, but you obviously won't find them uh, learning about things that don't even really interpret, inter, interpret into the things that they get to do when they're done with their, when they're done with their, their school. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. You can participate, the number to call is 0211 or rather 0211 like our Facebook page, the link to the we have Mr. Scott, who is a farmer as well as Paul Jacka, who is definitely an entrepreneur, and also we have a few institutes of teacher education in our live audience. Uh, Venom, get ready for messages because we'll be coming to you shortly. Let me just get contributions and questions from the audience. Yes, are your name? Uh, my question goes to Mr. Mr. Paul Dakane. Okay. Mr. Paul, uh, what are some of the factors that one can take into consideration if uh, he or she wants to start doing farming? Yes. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, so, um, like I said, I'm not, I'm not uh, a farmer just yet. But one thing I'll tell you is, if you want to take up a challenge that is uh, that has for a long time been perceived as something that is supposed to be done by older people or people with a lot of money, one thing I'll encourage you uh, to take on is that, first of all, you have to change your mindset because it all begins with the way you see things. You understand? The first thing that you have to do is change your mindset. And then the other thing, when I was, when I was uh, setting up my business, the major challenge that I had uh, is that I didn't have financial fin enough uh, financial capital to set up my business. So the first thing you have to do, not only you, but every other youth out there, engage in research. Try to find out how you can, how you can, because you don't necessarily have to have a physical cash with you to be able to set up a business. So it's the same thing with farming. You don't necessarily have to have, like you say, all the tractors and all the sophisticated equipment in place for you to be able to uh, start farming. So. After you've done the research, um, try to uh, find out from financial institutions how you can uh, get uh, financial support. 
because the problem that we have is we are usually afraid to start. I remember before I started, I I wrote a business plan. I, I, by then, I hadn't been to any business school. I'm actually studying business administration now because I developed an interest. I'm talking about this because I wanted to know a lot more uh, as, as an entrepreneur. Right. So, yeah. All right. Uh, okay. I think let, let, let Mr. Scott answer that question. Uh, him being uh, uh, the man in, in, in the field and, and practically doing farming. Okay. Uh, so, the way I did it, maybe I should explain how I did it. Yeah, yeah, sure. Rather Give us than uh, talking in general terms. Yeah. So, I started developing a passion for agriculture when I was about 16, 17, and uh, started reading any book I could get my hands on. I did it. I started working for farmers. I traveled actually to three continents. I worked in UK, I worked in Australia. I went to Brazil recently, all for learning. These days it's quite a lot easier actually because we've got this amazing resource which is called the internet. So, uh, like currently as an example, I'm a, I'm a member of a group called Small Scale Farmers Farming as Business, which is a Zambian based Facebook group. And there's almost 500,000 farmers on that group. Can you imagine that resource? Mm. 500,000 minds all thinking about agriculture with all their experience combined on one Facebook page. So if, if I had that when I was, when I was, if I was just starting now, that's where I would start my journey on Facebook, on this, on this uh, group, because there's so much combined experience there. Any question you put on there, what's this insect? What's this disease? Which type of tomato? How much is a box of tomatoes in Katumbalesa? All these questions, they are answered very quickly because there's all these people all checking their Facebook on this group and it's an amazing body of wealth. Reading, videos, YouTube is another amazing resource. Mm -hmm. You can learn a lot about agriculture sitting on your couch with a phone. This wasn't the case right. when I was getting into farming. Okay. <laughs> all right, let me get uh, a few more contributions or questions. Viewers at home. The only thing you have to do for you to participate is actually like our Facebook page, the link to the two. And also, you can uh, come through on our Facebook page, yeah, which is the link to the two, and participate to buy our number 0211 35 30 25. We have Mr. Scott, who's a farmer, and also uh, Mr. Daka here, who's a young person, and we're discussing uh, young people and uh, agriculture. Let me get a few more contributions of questions from the audience. My name is uh, Samson Yawizu. Mm -hmm. My question goes to Mr. Scott. Uh, we young uh, youths would like also to venture into agriculture, but there's one thing which is hindering us to, to go for agriculture, and that is capital. Now, uh, it is a difficult thing for us to, to go for that business because agriculture needs uh, a lot of money to start up. And so, how will you help us to make, uh, to make sure that we, we see the way forward and how we can go for that? Mrs. Scott, it's talking about uh, how you know we can get to uh, start agriculture if there's no money, capital and whatnot. You talked yeah, about yeah. tractors, you talked about equipment uh -huh. to do with farming, and yeah. for what I know, they're quite expensive. Mm. Yeah, so, yeah, indeed, yeah. yeah, your contribution to that. So, again, my example. I don't know, are you from Kafue? So, you might know me. I started my farming with a bicycle. Oh. Uh, a hoe, an axe and a bicycle. I used to take produce to Kafue Estate Market on Tuesday and Friday on the back of an Eagle bicycle. I don't know if any of you remember me. From there I built a trailer for my bicycle. So instead of carrying 50 kg, I would carry 170 kg pulling with a mountain bike. From there I bought a car after 10 years. So this idea that you need to start with a tractor, I'm sorry, not an excuse. Get your axe, your hoe, your mind, and apply yourself. You can do it. Even if you have to carry the stuff to market on your bike before you get enough money for the bicycle. <laughs> huh? A big hand, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, to us, today's young people, like, like uh, all of us, we are, we're quite impatient. We want to get something very fast. We want to have, you know, a, a briefcase of, of, of dollars in, in 24 hours. Mm -hmm. uh, the aspect of patience and, and, and us not really waiting on uh, you know, bigger things within 24 hours. I think, I think try and, and zero in in that aspect. 
on the tractor with the combine harvest. Look up there, it's black nest, it's still corn here. Zero, one person farming 6,000 hectares. Mm. So I don't know if that's sexy. To me, it's not very sexy. I prefer to, 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 to go on my small farm and have some chickens and some pigs and some cows and some vegetables and some fruit trees. To me, that's really what I enjoy in life, interacting with nature and making a good living and providing healthy food for my customers. This is really something very important. All right. Uh, Paul, how can we young people be encouraged to take up agriculture and not continue to look at it as a, as, as a thing for old folks? Um, you know, one of the things that... Uh, Yes. yes, my name is Mr. Miti. What Scott is saying is very true. Actually, he's my role model. I've followed him, and he, just this year, I've done about 15 hectares of maize, which is doing very well because of Scott. Scott was carrying vegetables on the bicycle, passing through C7, what have you, and after this, the combination of the institute and what have you, you have done a good thing, actually, this is total educative product you have done for Kafue people. Because if we are to survive in Zambia, follow that man's course. That man has endured the pain, and he was carrying from Charimbana vegetables on the head, on the bicycle, now he's driving a, a cabal. It's real and he has improved. To me, he was my role model, and this is why I also opted to go into farming because of him. Otherwise, farming is the only answer for this nation. The fact, and it is true, if someone is called the lawyer, has eaten his breakfast from the farmer, he has probably has eaten lunch from the farmer. So it is farming the people to rope for this nation, not whatever you are doing. Otherwise, I like the NBC or combination, Kafir to let them lay. Farming should not be an option. It should be the one side. Thank you very much. All right, thank you very much for uh, coming through. You can do the same. The number to call is 211 Alternatively, you can use our Facebook page and like it first. That is the link to the two, and you can post your questions, your contributions, and everything you think about our topic of discussion today, which is youths and agriculture. Paul, you're saying something. Wind up in 30 seconds. Yeah, so basically what I was saying is that if you're going to take up the challenge, you have to be willing to forego comfort. Mm -hmm. Because one of the things that holds us back as youth from uh, venturing into things that are normally perceived as things for old people. Can you also talk to uh, Solomon from Chilabongwe? Hello, Solomon, you're through to the link. Yes, yes, I uh, wanted to uh, appreciate me. That's Mr. Paul. Mm. I think he's right. The reason why we youths are really finding it hard to venture into agriculture is our school system doesn't not really equip us to do agriculture. You find that people that do agriculture science themselves don't even do it after finishing. Then what's the reason for that? I think we need our school system to at least change some things, you know, help us as we go out of school. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much, Solomon, for that contribution. I can do the same. Like I say, the number to call is 211 251901. We anticipate your participation right here on this very show. We love to call the link. Paul. Yeah, so I was, I was alluding to the fact that if you had to take up the challenge, you have to be willing to forego comfort. Because uh, one of the reasons that we leave things like farming and entrepreneurship to old people is because. We live in a world where we're exposed to things that look good in the moment. But we forget that for those things to look good, there was somebody who actually picked up uh, whatever resources they had and invested, and those things look good to our eyes. So we have to be willing to forgo our comfort in the moment and invest. Okay, I, I don't know if it's okay for me to give an example of myself, but then for me to start my business, I had to sell part of my salary. Most people like to call it a loan, but for me, if you if you're moving as a person, you have to have something at the summit of, 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 of your of your of your goals. You wake up every morning, you have something you're working towards. And if you're hell bent on achieving what you want, nothing will hold you down. So my salary was able to pay my bills, uh, pay my renters and everything, but then I realized that I need to secure a future. So I had to pick part of my salary for a particular period and sell it and invest uh, whatever money I was supposed to get in a certain period and start up a business. So if you are uh, looking into venturing into agriculture or any other um, field as a young person, you have to 
for goal comforts. That's one of the few. Okay. Yeah. If you look at uh, statistics, they show that Zambia is, is the second largest uh, the producer of copper, and that's next from Congo. But the way things have been done so far, uh, we, 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 we depend so much on copper, we depend so much on, on, on this mineral to get you know our GDP going. But then, venturing into agriculture as young person, looking at how the economy is currently, what is the significance of venturing into agriculture as a young person? 30 seconds, then we go to the audience. You know, for me, it goes back to the education system. If you look at agriculture, uh, from from the, the the raw materials, mm. we have everything available in the country, and then for you to come up with the actual product, mm. we have everything available. We have the factories that make is it millimil, sun, uh, cooking oil, and everything else within the country. But then, if you're talking about copper and everything else, the end product is done away from our country, so it becomes a bit of a, an expensive venture, and then also. Uh, uh, it, 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 it takes away the fact that when you are working in the mines, uh, process, uh, producing copper, you're working as a miner or something, you're not the person that's actually making the actual product. So at the end of the day, it, 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 it takes away the idea of uh, the products, because uh, of putting uh, agriculture and mining in, in juxtaposition. So it takes away the, actual pro the, the benefit of the actual product from us. Because if you to become a farmer, you do everything locally, and it contributes to the local uh, domestic product. Right. Yeah. And we get questions of contribution from uh, the audience. Zero two one one twenty five nineteen zero one. You can follow the conversation on Facebook, which is the link to the two. Alternatively, you can go to Go TV ninety one DSTV two seventy six. Top star. You don't only get to be on top of the stuff, but also get to enjoy the so life. The channel is zero three. Let me get questions and contribution from my audience. Yes, sir, your name? Uh, my name is uh, Ingrid Mugabe. Mm -hmm. And this question is going straight to Mr. Scott. Okay. I'm one of the youths who would really love to venture into agriculture, but looking at the, the, the rain cycle, it's not so reliable. So, Mr. Scott, what would be your advice? Despite the rain cycle not being reliable, what can I do for me to, like, to like get my, high, my, my hopes high in venturing into agriculture? That's a very interesting question. Thank you. And a, and a question which I can answer. Uh, uh, this is one subject I'd call myself an expert in. If you recall last year, for example, in Kafue, there was hardly anybody who harvested maize in the whole area. I harvested a good crop. Not, a, not the best crop, but a good crop. And the secret really is... Yes, we are experiencing this change in climate, which means more erratic rainfall and longer dry spells and higher temperatures. What can you do? And the answer lies in traditional agricultural practices. You know, we always look for new technology. Mm. But this one, the best is actually to look at traditional farming practices, which increase the organic matter in the soil. Does everyone know what organic matter is? When the leaves or the crop residues rot in the soil, they make it fertile. And that's referred to as organic matter. When that happens in your farm or on your soil, your soil becomes soft. So when the rain falls, the more rain goes in. The other thing it does, it acts like a sponge. You know the sponge you use for washing the dishes in the kitchen? It's very light, but it can hold a lot of water. So it allows you to go two, three, sometimes. Last year we went four weeks with no rain, but we had a very good harvest. So really, the answer to that, if you're growing dry land crops, for example, if you're growing vegetables, then you need to think about irrigation. But for dry land crops like maize, soya, groundnut, cotton, dry beans, which form the majority of our uh, our small scale farmers. Mr. So Scott, can you hold the thought of somebody in the line? Mr. Malunga, you're through to the link. Yes, um, good afternoon, good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Thank you. Uh, you want to make a contribution over a good topic? Going on here right now. Hello. Go ahead. Yes, I'm saying the, the topic is very nice, very educative. How I wish um, uh, the government is listening, and then the young men, and uh, as, as they are listening right now, they will discover that uh, we may go to white collar jobs, but we forget that there is a source of, of some money somewhere there, which is the agriculture. I like the farmer who is uh, giving us the lecture right now. 
Uh, I wish that the government is listening that the young men can also be empowered in such a line that they are, are completing their special education and they go first out into into the issues of public health. Otherwise, it's a good lecture, a good lesson, and a way to go in this free hard economy for our, our, land, our country. Land. Thank you so much. I wish that everyone is listening and the government is listening to this kind of a good um, uh, lecture. Thank you so much to the farmers that are contributing, that are giving us the lecture. Thank you. Thank you so much as well. We say thank you to you for coming through the number 0211-25-19-0. Now, Mrs. Scott, I want you to wind up in 30 seconds and get some more contributions and questions from the audience. Yeah, so we hear a lot about climate changing, and that seems to be transpiring into floods and droughts. And really, they're the same thing. What happens is our agricultural practices, if we burn our crop residue, which most of the farmers do in Zambia, if we don't apply manure to the field or compost to the field, after a few years of using that field year after year, the soil becomes very hard. When the rain falls, it all runs off the field instead of going in. Then a few days later, we say we have a drought. Where has the water gone which didn't go into the soil, it's rushed into the, field, uh, into, the, into the stream and flooded somewhere else? So we often hear about droughts and floods at the same time. It's the same thing with the pasture land been degraded we burn it every year when the rain falls it doesn't go into the soil to recharge the rivers and the streams uh, and and the aquifer the underground water it goes off takes the topsoil with it and all the nutrients so we really have to think about how do we catch that rain and keep it in the soil and the way we do that is by less fire and adding manure and keeping residues on the on the field so your soil can become soft enough to accept that water all right Okay, let me get one more contribution and question from the audience there, and then we go to Venon uh, with our Facebook messages on our Facebook page, which is the link to the two. Any question or contribution? Yes, ma'am, your name? Yes, my name is Elizabeth Scott. Yes, and my question goes to Mr. Scott. Uh, it is evident that agriculture is indeed the answer to sustainable development. But uh, do you think enough is being done to attract the youth to venture into agriculture? Or are they being enlightened more so that they know the benefits for both the youth and the nation at large? Thank you. Uh, that's a very interesting question again. Thank you. Um, it is indeed, in my view and the view of the experts, the route towards sustainable development. Uh, whether enough is being done to attract the youths, I don't know. I mean, who's responsible for that? Is it us, the farmers? I was thinking of putting a YouTube uh, video to try and attract the youth, mm -hmm. but I'm not sure I'm good enough behind the camera to, to I'm not pragmatic enough. Should hire me. To, oh, well, yeah, exactly, that's mm -hmm. a good idea. We can put a YouTube channel together. But uh, I think re your two questions are related. You were asking about the potential for the youth. You know, in Zambia, we have this the elephant in the room is our population growth. We are around 17, 18 million now. By 2050, in 30 years, we're, around, we're going to be around 50 million people. And our neighbors are growing at the same rate. So the real good thing for the youth is there will be no shortage of market. Because each one of those 50 million people is going to need to eat. So it's a huge business opportunity. So I don't know, I don't know if I've answered your question enough, but uh, I would say we can probably do more, and uh, I don't know whose responsibility it is, but I'll try my best to, to encourage the youth, my, I'll do my best. Okay, all right, let's join Venon on the messages, our Facebook page, the link to be too, we see some of the messages we've been sending in, and of course, uh, we hear some of the questions that you have for Mr. Sebastian, as well as for Venon, take it away. I just want to go back with the messages uh, that have been actually coming through from Facebook. So first of all, this one, this one says agriculture is important as it is a source of income. The only problem with youths is that they like white collar jobs. They are contributing to the hunger in the country. That is coming in from uh, Deuce Paul Mukuma. And also, uh, the Tariq got no manners, quite a name. Great topic, agriculture is important because it helps in balancing the economy of the country. And uh, this one coming in from Gibson says, looking good, guys. So keep the messages coming in. That's all actually we had.
but uh, pretty much the, 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 the page is still open. So pretty much send in your comments and contributions. Be it a question, Mr. Scott and Paul are readily available to pick up your questions. Dominic. All right, thank you so much. Keep them coming, keep them coming. Make sure that uh, you continue with the conversation on our Facebook page. And of course, we have Ennis on the line. Ennis, you're through to the link. Hello, you're through to the link. Okay, we, see, we seem to have lost Ennis there. Please try to call again. The number is 0211 Alternatively, our Facebook page is readily available for you to ensure that you post your questions your concerns and everything you feel is right or wrong about our topic of discussion today, which is youth and agriculture. Let me get let me get uh, two more contributions from the audience. That is Jamsha. Yes, I name. My name is Peter Siamba. Mm -hmm. My question goes to Mr. Scott. Um, I've been hearing about farming, crops, things. Uh, agriculture is very wide, so I want to ask if agriculture is only about crops or maybe what kind uh, of can you hold yourself you have somebody on the line William you're through to the link yes uh, I'm following the program very educative may such course continue with that experience all right thank yes, you so I'm much following the program it's very educative okay yeah maybe such Continue educating the youth. That's the only way we can develop our nation. All right. Thank you very much for coming, Hugh. Thank you. All right. Do the same. The number is 0211 So I finish on your question. Of course, yes, I was saying now, which area of agriculture can you advise us youths to venture into? Because even the things of keeping livestock keeping a lot of things. There is farming, there is this livestock thing. So in Zambia particularly, what kind of, which area do you advise us to venture in as youths? Thank you. Another very good question. Uh, well, I'd say, you know, agriculture is very, very broad. Uh, you know, honey production, mushroom production, Fisheries is all, all also in the agriculture or farming. Mm. Wildlife, we're starting to have uh, game farms. I think we were one of the some of the first game farmers in the world, are actually here in Zambia. There's opportunity for everything. I don't know if you like game meat, but I do, as long as it's legal. If it's not legal, it tastes a bit bitter. <laughs> but uh, you know, so the opportunity is massive. Whether it's fish, honey, mushrooms, livestock, cattle. You know, some of the richest farmers in Zambia are the people we see, like, they're very simple. They come from Namala. Mm -hmm. And they're the only farmers, including these big commercial farmers who go into Toyota with cash in a briefcase and buy a new Land Cruiser. There's very few farmers in the world that can do that. And they're doing it because... Can you have thought of somebody in the line, Mr. Scott? Hello, you're through to the link. Hello, you're through to the link. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Your name? My name is Isaac Mangira. Sure. Go ahead. You can send us a contribution. Yeah, what I'm saying is uh, it's a very interesting thing. Mm. Yeah, so I, I want to answer that one with say, who say that the, how can I go with farming without having without having a capital? Mm -hmm. So the first thing that we should do, have in mind is to have confidence and, 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 and interest in doing things. I mean, you know, how I started farming, I was asking from friends. I asked for maize, which, which was planted last year. I, I, they give me the a gallon, a meter. I planted in a small portion. From there, after harvesting, I, 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 do, I, I planted a big portion. From there, I, I buy a gallon fertilizer. It was growing like this. I, I, at the moment now, I can able to have uh, three hectares of May of May, and again three hectares of uh, cucumber, three hectares of uh, of tomatoes. So it's very interesting. So the capture uh, is it, your mind and focus and constant. We're doing that. You can go very far. Thank you. All right. Thank you.
you so much for coming to the number you use is 0211 251901 like our facebook page and post your question there and uh mr scott as well as mr daka here will give us his concerns as well as our audience is readily available to, to answer all them all of all, all of your questions in that manner mr mr scott in 30 seconds then we go to another uh, uh, uh audience participator finishing off this question yes no uh, like like you rightfully said agriculture is extremely diverse even forestry for me is under agriculture agriculture puts the clothes on our on, on our back at least my shirt is cotton i don't know about yours but uh, mine was grown in the field by farmers <laughs> pretty much it must should be most of it's cotton silk wool they all come from from the soil their own family under management so zambia has so much potential so much water so much good soil so much sun which is what drives the whole production. But the opportunity and 50 million customers are going to be waiting for you in 2050. I don't know about you, but I, I hope I'll be there. And my target is 100 years, so uh, that's my target. I don't know if I'm going to reach. Uh, God willing. Are you willing to, sh to share your age with us? How old are you? 41. Okay. I told you it was just my, my <laughs> The number to call is 0211 getting interesting and more interesting. This is a show that we love to call uh, the link. Paul, give us your winding re remarks just in 30 seconds. Okay, so I know we usually have a fear when it comes to uh, putting down the things that makes us feel comfortable and venturing into something totally new. But one thing I would advise the youth out there is that, uh, you know, everything, if you're venturing into everything new, mm -hmm. there's always things that you have to let go of. And then one of the things that's going to help you realize what you can do and which is going to give you the most potential to excel. Mm -hmm. I don't know how many of you guys growing up wanted to be teachers. Most of them after teachers. Yeah. All of them. So my point is, it's going to help you a whole lot if you're going to align your, your, your career choice with your, with your vocation. Okay, because you find that some people who want to be, who grow up, I actually wanted to be, grow, grow up wanting to become an, an engineer. But then, you know, the results and everything else turn out to be something else. Mm. And then I've always grown up with the idea of not waiting for somebody for too long. I'm, I'm approaching my 30s, I'm not going to disclose how old I am. <laughs> right. uh, you know, I feel like I'm at a stage in life where I need to start pursuing my, 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 my goals in life. Okay. okay. So for every youth out there, try at, at an early stage to align your career next, right, right next to your, to your vocation. Because right. if you're going to excel at anything, it has to be something that you're passionate about. Thank you very much. Thank you. Now, Mr. Scott, due to time, I wanted to describe farming in five words. Farming in five words? Yes. Five? Yes. <laughs> I've never, never even thought of doing that. <laughs> but let me try. Uh, fun, interesting, deep, profitable, and uh, the last that. one you can put yourself. No, I, I, <laughs> Okay, you've been watching the link right here on TV2, the Pastor Television. Always remember that the show comes here to make sure that you 